Hey there, and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we address the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. And you guys, we are going to talk about something really uplifting, really exciting. And that is that your spouse tends to be happy, okay? They're awesome. They're awesome. Yeah, we've, so, kind, yeah. Of, we've, we've kind of focused on the negatives right. in well, recent what, weeks. Yeah, like yeah. help, my spouse is you know, a workaholic or this or that. Right. And those are important issues. Right. But I think it's important to just acknowledge like, hey, my spouse is awesome. That's right. And even if your spouse is struggling in some of those other areas, you can still celebrate the things that they're doing right, the things that they are awesome at. Right. And I think too, I, I want to talk about this dynamic where your spouse is awesome, you know it, and they're really happy and you're so glad that they're happy, but maybe you feel a little bit inadequate because they are so happy and so awesome. That's, what do you do with that? That's Well, that's how I feel <laughs> because oh my goodness. I married my dream girl. And, I married my dream dad. And she is so much smarter and cooler and more amazing than me. And that's I, not true, but. I just feel inadequate, but yet I'm still just happy <laughs> that, that you You're stuck so around. You're so sweet. Let me tell you though, in all honesty, I feel like there are people that at times feel this inadequacy. I mean, really, like I feel like they're so excited. Like they love their spouse dearly. They love that they're happy and awesome and successful and doing great things, but they feel inadequate. I mean, we've come across couples like this and there's been times I felt that way with you. I've been like, what? well, I've told you that I've been like, especially when we started speaking together, I was like, you've been doing this way longer than me. And I just, I feel like inadequate, you know? I mean, do you remember no, we had you a were conversation? always, always so gifted, but I think it, I was, when you ca- stepped into it, I'd had a massive head start. I mean, you'd been performing, you'd been on big yes, stages. Yes, but not like preaching. But like, this was like... just a new a new thing for you. You had all the giftedness and the calling to do it, of course. I mean, you're just amazingly gifted. But, you know, there was that learning curve of like, okay, this is something different. Yeah. And I'd been at it a while. And so, I mean, obviously with, with anything, when one person's been doing longer than another, there's some of that. But man, you quickly caught up and then just kept going right past. And now, <laughs> Whatever. And now I'm the one like, man, I'm the dead weight here. She's Oh, like, that is not true. She's amazing. I love speaking together. Speaking of speaking together, guys, um, our biggest event of the year is right around the corner, the weekend right before Valentine's Day, Exo Marriage Conference. Yes. Uh, 4,000 people there live in Grapevine, Texas at Fellowship Church and many thousands more uh, live casting it around the world. We would love to see you there, especially if you can come in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, there aren't many seats left, but we would love to see you there. Exomarriage.com slash conferences. If you can't come to that one, look on the, the schedule and see maybe we're coming closer to your area and we would love to see you there. So I yeah. always want to just remind you about the live events because we love meeting you. We love, love gathering together, worshiping together, learning together. Uh, our events are so much fun. And uh, and hey, Christmas is around the corner. It'd be a great little Christmas present for your spouse to say, hey, I got us tickets. We're doing yeah. a road trip. And yeah, so do that. That would be something awesome. Oh my gosh, I, I can't wait. It's always, every year, even though we're part of the team and we speak at these events, I'm just surprised by how awesome they are. I mean, I know they're going to be awesome, but I'm always like, wow, that's even more awesome. Like it really is. And, and you know, it, it's something that no matter where you are in your marriage, whether it's, you know, a good season, you're just wanting to kind of brush up on some marital skills, or if you're in a, a crisis, you know, yeah. I think that all of us can get something out of it. I think especially for those of you who are at a turning point where you're like, we just really need some help. You're going to, you're going to leave here feeling like there's hope for your marriage, you yeah. know? And, uh, yeah, I and love it. I love it. And if you're listening to this and you're like rolling my eyes, like, oh my gosh, like, well, my marriage is not awesome. My spouse is certainly not awesome. <laughs> um, and you just kind of feel like you're stuck in a rut. Uh, listen, every marriage goes through bumps. Yeah. Every person is imperfect. And so don't, don't get stuck first off in this comparison trap of rolling through Instagram and seeing people's highlight reels with filtered photos where everything looks perfect and happy and shiny. Because oh. you don't know the behind the scenes struggles and everybody has them first off. I was and, just laughing because like we were just sharing with friends last night about in the midst of this eight week travel thing, having a little, like I was just in a mood with you recently. We, and we go back and forth. You guys. We, like it, Where we're tired and you know grumpy and travels hard on oh us. Oh my and gosh. Where we live uh, in Georgia, which we love, it's home for our kids. It's hard, it's, a, it's hard to get to, not a major airport. You know, there's driving. We drive to flying, Atlanta two hours away. It's a, it's a thing. And by it's the time I get there at the end of the day, <laughs> Like, man, I'm beat. Um, we take turns, but no, I we take turns being grumpy. Like, because I do think that you guys probably, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, I know you all have your stuff in the past, but you don't currently ever 
have any moments, but you guys, we have moments. Like Yeah, and we don't want to paint that picture like we no. listen to us because we're, we're just have this perfect. figured out. Because yeah. it's it's that's not true. Now no. um I will say, like I I love our marriage and oh, I, I love, our love marriage. you yes. and I and I, I love it and I, I I'm so thankful for you. Um but I think part of why I love our marriage is because we've been intentional about trying to consistently be kind to each other. Yeah. And encouraging to each other mm -hmm. and showing gratitude and courtesy to each other. And the same things that we talk about here all the time, like we're, we're trying to live that out. I fully believe every couple can have an amazing marriage. Jimmy yeah. Evans is right when he says you have a 100% chance of success if you do marriage God's way. Right. I fully believe that. And so you think, well, I, I, my spouse isn't awesome right now. I think your marriage could become better if you start treating your spouse as if they were. Right. If you start calling out those things you want to see more of them, if you start thanking them for those things they're doing right, even if that list is small right now, find something to thank, something to praise, and focus on that good. Because if you get your mind just focused on the negative, it's all you're going to see. Jesus said, seek and you will find. And the verb tense he used is really saying, whatever you keep seeking is what you will find. If you keep looking for the negative in your spouse, it's all you're going to see. But if you choose to look for the positive and to praise the good, you're going to see it at every turn. Mm -hmm. And so just train your mind. Say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to focus on the good. Help me to be more of an encourager to my spouse. And as you do that, what you're going to find is your spouse will start improving and you will start improving. Right. Like your own attitude, your, your countenance mm -hmm. is going to get more positive. You're going to become a better spouse because that's something an awesome spouse does is we're encouragers. That doesn't yeah. mean we put our heads in the sand and pretend like issues aren't there. Uh, it doesn't mean we don't l lovingly call out unhealthy behavior, but our our baseline tone needs to be one of encouragement and, and positivity. Man, it's so true. And I think about like even in moments where we are stressed and maybe we just have like a, you know, a little stank on our words is what I like <laughs> to call it. Um, I, I think it's important just to repair fast. And, and authentically repair that. And what I mean by that, there's actually a book in my classes. Um, you guys know I'm almost through my biblical counseling degree, my master's degree in biblical counseling. Thank the Lord. And I remember in my mar marriage and family counseling class, I read an awesome book that's been around forever by Dr. John Gottman. And I think it's called Seven, Happy, uh, Seven Habits of ha Happy Couples or something to that effect. Is that right? Uh, yeah, the the seven... I'm going to look it up. It's excellent. Yeah, the, it's a John Gottman The Seven book. Habits. That's terrible. He's I read a, a bunch of books. He's not a Christian, I will say, but he he's is... He's actually Jewish. Uh, but, right, um, yeah. So yeah. he comes from a, from, from a, a highly, faith, okay. faith worldview, you know, based on the Old Testament. Very brilliant researcher, um, you know, and, and uh, he's, got, he's got some really good and solid stuff out there. And it's the seven habits of... No, I got it. Okay. Right. The seven principles... Okay. For making, for making marriage, work. marriage work. There it is. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. I yeah. said habits and it got that me off. That threw me off. Yeah. Principles. Um, seven principles. Seven principles. And let me tell you, it it is such it is such a good practical book for those who are like, you know, there's not, there's not been like some dire thing happen in your marriage. Okay. Right. But yes. you're like, we have these fights. We just aren't happy. We're not, you know, totally yeah. unhappy. But we're not... It, it's sustainable, but it's not right. great. It's like, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. And, and I think a lot of people, maybe most people... I think most just marriages... Just kind of live there. It's, yeah. It's like, it's it's not awesome. Right. It's okay. It's not a crisis. I'm not leaving my spouse, but yeah. it's not the best thing ever. Yeah. And I mean, we talk to a lot of couples this way. And what I like about this book is, you know, he and his wife actually studied hundreds of couples over a long period of time. And, uh, and they basically, they, they called it the love lab. They studied what they did, how they do marriage, because they wanted to learn like, what is the secret sauce? What, what makes the, the, the couples who don't seem to, to last, you know, like what are they doing differently than the couples that last? Okay. And so I just, it, I found it fascinating. And what's really interesting about this book and these seven principles is they actually are biblical. Like he doesn't put the Bible verse that goes with it. But as I was reading this book, 
I'm like, there are Bible verses to support these facts, like yeah, to support yeah. these truths. And I think that's really awesome. And so, um, again, it's not really, it's a secular book, but I think you can completely apply it to your marriage. I, I definitely endorse it. I think it's really good, um, research base, uh, uh, material. But one of the things he talks about is the couples that last and have not only last, but, you know, some couples last just because they're determined, you know, and I, and I love that. I mean, there, we need to have that element of it of like, we've made this commitment. We're determined we're going to last, but the couples that last and are, we consider themselves happy, yeah, thriving, they're thriving. They love being married. They usually repair fast. What they mean by that is like, yeah, we're going to have moments where we're scratchy, where we're, we say something we regret. Um, we're just kind of not in a good mood or whatever. If you do say something that you repair it fast, that means you don't, you know, just like the verse, like, don't go to bed angry. Like you repair that fast. You make sure that you say, listen, I was out of line. I'm so sorry. Would you please forgive me? And, uh, I, and he's saying like, that is a big difference. Another thing is couples are going to have, you know, negative experiences sometimes. Like we're going to have just days where we're, you know, we're just not at our best. And it could be for a lot of different reasons. He said that, you know, that's inevitable, but the couples that last and are thriving, they do, they, they understand this, this, um, they call it the five to one ratio. And they saw this in the couples that again, not only lasted, but were thriving. And it was this, this principle that, you know, for every one negative interaction you have with your spouse, you need to have five positive interactions. Yeah, and what happens good. is when you have those positive interactions, when that negative interaction comes, you quickly recover from that because you've had, you've really been filling each other's, you know, love tank, so to speak, of like having, knowing that you see the best in each other, knowing that you're not against them, that you're for them. And, uh, and I love that. And I've even seen that in our own marriage, you know, cause we've had, we've had moments that, that we don't love, but we've had many more great moments. And so when we do have an off day, we don't automatically think like the worst. Like we were like, you know, you're having an off day. Yeah, like we don't, we don't love the off days, but I and, mean, and if we do, like if, if I, if we say something that was a little, little snarky or yeah. a little bit grumpy, um, or we've just kind of been cold or distant, I think both of us do a pretty good job of, of quickly, kind of quickly yeah. re apologizing and saying, listen, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. stressed about something else. Or, but it's I, not you. It's not you, but I, I, but I took, but, but you had to feel the brunt of it. And I'm so sorry for that. I want to always be at my best for you. And right. Um, and then to quickly show grace too, yes, instead of like yes. punishing each other or, you know, playing mind games. There's just, we try to have a drama free marriage right. and to really believe the best in each other. It's like, oh, well, you know, he's grumpy right now. She's grumpy right now. And, and, but I believe the best in them yeah. that this, they're having a moment or, you know, for me, I went through like a long season and it was kind of medically induced, but my hormones were off and Ashley was just so compassionate and patient. And I knew I could feel that I wasn't pleasant, but, um, she chose to see the best in me and that helped bring out the best in me. Yeah. But when you are focusing on the negative, you're going to actually bring out the negative in your spouse. We are going to hold them down. Like yeah. we have to root for each other. And I think too, it builds, you really need to have confidence in, in, in the marriage. Like you, you feel secure. Yeah. Like you want yeah. that security of they're not going to go talk bad about me just because I was snarky this morning. Like they're not going to go tell all their workplace about how mean I was this morning because they have respect for me. And also because we've repaired this and they, and we're not going to keep bringing it up. We're not going to keep bringing up the past. You know what I'm saying? Like, and every time we do that and we really see the best in each other, we work to repair. We are building that confidence. We're, we're building up that security. Like you can trust me. You can trust me. I have your back. I am for you, not against you. We are in this together. And those are the happy marriages. I mean, that's what you see. And I think one dynamic I want to talk about before we close is, you know, maybe your spouse is really happy and you're so glad they're happy. You're so glad they're so awesome. But you yourself right now in your life, you're not happy. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and it maybe has nothing to do with your spouse, but you're going through maybe anxiety and depression life has not turned out right. quite disappointment like, yeah, disappointment with, your, with anything, your, your professional life, kids, finances, your, your health, your weight. I mean, there's just things extended that can family. Get us down. Yeah. And I think, um, I've had moments like this where everything is really good in our family. But, uh, you know, when I was going through my depression, for sure, I was like, I, I mean, you, you were really in a good place at that time. Thank God. I mean, I could really lean on you because you were, you were in a really good place. Well, like you said, we take turns. Like we a, take turns. a strong marriage is yes. two people taking turns being strong. Exactly. But it's like, there were years where I just wasn't happy. I was thankful for my life. 
Yeah. I was yeah. grateful for you and for the kids and still am obviously, but I remember just my baseline was in happiness. And, uh, and there were times because my mental health was off, not only spiritually, but you know, chemically it was off. Sure. Um, and my whole body felt it like, and I gained weight. Um, I have a tendency when I gain weight, which I've had, I've talked about this very openly on here and in, in our talk about, you know, our naked and healthy book, I talk about this extensively, but I, I've had like a 30 pound swing in my weight over the years. And this is with, without kids. Okay. I'm just talking about in general and not being pregnant, you know, and in fact, I didn't really gain that much with our pregnancies. This is like a whole I separate think I issue. I more than you during <laughs> our pregnancies. Like my sympathy weight outpaced your actual baby weight. Oh my I think. goodness. No. Cause I mean, I, I really just a normal amount of weight that I gained, but I know that, um, at times when I was trying to lose weight and I didn't, or if I was depressed, I tended to go to food. I mean, it was like a comfort to me. It really, really messed with my happiness. And it wasn't even just a vain thing. It wasn't like, Oh, I'm not whatever side. I wanted to be or whatever weight I wanted to be. I think it was like my body like wasn't like, I think it, it like I didn't feel good because I wasn't eating the right things and I wasn't exercising like I should. And then it would, you know, it would mess with my mind and, yeah. and my happiness. And so, um, you know, even in those times, you, you've always, you've always been so quick to compliment me and to say like, listen, I love you just as you are. But if you want to go, like I remember years ago, I was like, I need something more than what I'm doing. And it's going to cost some money. I feel like I've done what I can in this season, but I need, I need professionals to help guide me in this exercise. And he's like, well, what do you want? And I, and I checked out Pilates through club Pilates and in our town and it, in that season, it was a solid year that I did it. It was so awesome. Like I, it upped my, my game with my exercise regimen and, and I saw the results. Like I really saw my body changing, but more than my body changing. Cause I don't think I saw the scale really change a whole lot. It was really more the muscles and the strength. I loved how it just made me feel stronger, more flexible. And like, I, I, I remember telling you, like, I just like the camaraderie I get from the ladies that I, you know, have my class with. I ended up, you know, because of our travel schedule, you know, getting out of my membership for now. And I, but I'm able to do at home some of those Pilates exercises and it's taught me so much. So I think that sometimes I'm, I'm sharing this because I think a lot of times our spouse may be happy and we're not unrelated to the marriage. We need to, you know, encourage our spouse, not like be happy. Why can't you be happy? Like I'm happy. You know, sometimes some people are just more chipper than other people. Like they just are. And you know that about your spouse. Like maybe your baseline is just pretty melancholy. Like you're not yeah. sad. You're not happy. You're mel You're just kind of, you know, is, is that the right word? Maybe or, melancholy or is even not just the right more word. Chill. Like some people just, are more yeah. outwardly expressive with their happiness, right, their energy right. level, their enthusiasm. And we can learn from each other and we can celebrate that. Yes. But when we try to diminish our spouse's personality, Right. Or making there's something wrong with you. Like because, you're too excited. Yeah. You know, or, and, or yeah, or you're just or, always just a bummer. You're, you're a drag. So Instead you're of a drag, yeah. saying, you know what? I married you and God made you wonderful and awesome. Mm -hmm. And we compliment each other. I'm so thankful for the the ways that, that you, your enthusiasm, you know, brightens life for me and challenges right. me or, or your, you know, your, uh, your, your temperament kind of like helps me be more grounded and, yeah. you know, whatever it is, like we can choose to focus on the good and, and thank them for who they are and celebrate who they are instead of trying to make them feel like they're, they're right. wrong because they're not you. And I feel like in those um, depressed years and also the years I was struggling with my weight, I, I really feel like you, you didn't make me feel like snap out of it. And because honestly, it takes time to, to feel better and to, yeah, to make changes. Course. And so I'm thankful for that. And I, I just think that it's important that whatever it is our spouse is going through, that we we don't hinder their progress. Like we really try to just meet them where they are. We don't try to fix it, but we do try to offer any help that they may want from us. Yeah. Yeah. So good guys. So be that kind of spouse. Yeah. And uh, Hey, if, if, if you need help getting there, we've got uh, some mediators here at Exo Marriage that could meet you in person or by phone or by Skype to help you and your spouse get to that awesome marriage that you both want and that God wants you to have. So you can go yeah. to xomarriage.com slash help for more info on that. Like I said before, come to our one of one of our upcoming EXO Marriage Conferences. We would love to see you there. And as always, you can find us on Instagram at Dave and Ashley Willis. We love getting your messages and hearing from you. Thanks so much, guys. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye.